Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to check out the schema as an artifact paradigm that you can use to really visualize what the change impact of a commit is to your schema. Before I dive in, we are running online workshops for a variety of topics around GraphQL. So if you want to learn Relay, Hot Chocolate, Strawberry Shake or what have you, you can check out our workshops at learn.chilicream.com. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. Okay, I have already prepared here a little repository. And in this little repository, we have here one API, which is the catalog API. What I want to do is introduce schema as an artifact as a paradigm and then we're going to introduce some changes here. So I already have here a build script, not a build script, a YAML pipeline for GitHub Actions. At the moment it does not do a lot, just when there is a pull request to main, it's going to run and it will install .NET, then restore the project that we have and then build it. So very basic. Let's head to VS Code. And there's my project. And here's my YAML pipeline as seen before. In my project, we are using the minimal API style. So we have one program CS, and then we have all our configuration logic here. If you use our template and our template, you can get if you do a .NET new install, and then you can type in hotchocolate.templates and then you would get our template. So I have actually set that up with our template. Then you would have down here this app.run with GraphQL commands. This extension comes actually from a new package that we introduced with Hot Chocolate 13. And you can see here Hot Chocolate ASP.NET Core command line. So basically it allows us to intercept the application start. And what we do here is we intercept the arguments and then if there are schema export arguments, we are not starting the actual service, but we are dumping the schema. Let me show you that. So we can go in here and then we can just say .NET run. And then we're gonna .NET run the project here, the catalog API. And then you see these two dashes here. They are just saying, okay, everything that comes now is basically an argument into your application. And if you pass in the schema export arguments here, then we are gonna export the schema. And this also works without this pass here. If I just say schema export, then it will print us the schema into the console. I could pipe that from there or do whatever what I want with that. I can also just add this output parameter here and then I get the schema dumped into my root here. So what we want to have is with every commit that we do, with every C-sharp change, we actually want to have a schema dump in our commit showing us the impact. So what I'm going to do is I'm checking in now this initial state. This is the initial state of our schema and I'm putting that here in the root, right? So let's commit that and push it. And with that, we have now the schema in GitHub right here. So now let's automate that a bit. So with every commit, we want to have the difference in our check-in. So for this, we're going to rewrite here our YAML pipeline a bit. And what I want to do is automatically do this kind of thing in our pull request. And the first thing we got to do is up here, actually ignore any triggers on the schema file, because if we're going to update that in our pull request, we don't want to have endless triggers. So we're going to just say here passes to ignore is the schema.graphql. Okay, with this in, the next thing we're going to do is actually introduce here a new task or a new step and we call that export schema and in there we just do a .NET run. Then like we did in our console, we do a dash dash project and then you can see the pass. We can actually copy the pass here relatively with Visual Studio Code, pass that in and then dash dash and now we can pass in the schema export dash dash output and now we have to go two times up to export the schema.graphql. So this will dump our schema into the root and now we gotta check it in. So let's do that. So let's introduce another step here and let's call that commit schema and in this case we need more than just one line of command. So let's first handle GitHub here. So we're gonna set up the user that is gonna check in and that is actually the git bot. So I'm putting that in here. That might differ if you're on DevOps or any other thing like GitLab. 
but in GitHub, it's these two guys here. Then we do the obvious. So we're gonna check in the schema.graphql. So let's do a git add schema.graphql. And the next thing is we don't wanna fail with the git commit when this is not changed, right? So typically we would do a git commit here and then we would say update schema maybe, but this would fail when we don't have anything to commit. So what we do is a git diff cached, then we add here this exit code and then we commit. So basically if there is a diff that we can track, then we're gonna git commit this. So last we wanna push that back and to push that back, we gotta push it to the right origin back. So we need to track that here with the GitHub head ref, and then this works out, but we also need the Git token for that. So let's end that here. And up here, we wanna make sure if the Git bot does anything, we don't run that. So this is the basic setup. This would still fail because in GitHub, we gotta set something so that we are allowing our git bot to check things in and we can do that here in the actions under general you want to make sure that you have read and write permissions we save that and then we're going to check this in and see if it works build is always unpredictable you know so let's say this is updated okay now let's create a new branch and let's actually change something. So I'm calling that uh, change brand product connection because I'm gonna change a connection type and let's push it to the origin. And then we're gonna do our change. So our change is pretty easy. We just go here and go to our types. And in our types, we have here this brand node, this guy, and this has a connection here, very easy. And what we're gonna do here is actually renaming this connection. So we wanna have this connection called brand products. And this is the change we wanna do. So let's check it in. And then we go back to GitHub. In GitHub, we should be able to create a pull request now, renamed connection or renamed brand product connection. Let's create that. And now our build will trigger. Okay, it's enqueued. Let's have a look into it. And we run here into an error. And uh, that actually is a problem with our build script or our pipeline, our YAML file. As I said, like with build, always something goes wrong. And up here, we just check out. And what the GitHub action will do is check out as cheaply as possible. So what we need here is actually the full history so we can make changes. So let's do that. So we're gonna say with. So this fetch depth is actually saying that it should get the whole history for us and that should fix the problem. Let's quickly look it over. And ah, there's also one thing missing. This is origin is head and a colon, but this should work. So let's try it again. Let's actually get to the main branch, fixed build, push that, go back to GitHub. We go to our pull request again. Then we go up here and we're gonna rerun the jobs. And this time it's green, the build is green and you can see we check this in here. So let's go back to the pull request. And what the nice thing is now for the reviewer, I did a C-sharp change and you can see that down here. This is the C-sharp change and this is the impact to the schema. So I renamed here this connection, but this created another type, actually two types that are added here and also changed this field. So the impact is much larger than what you have expected. And having this in your commits is also good. So good for your reviewer because the reviewer will see the impact you're having to your consumers and good also later when we have merged that we're going to do that here this is merged and now we can go to our history here and then when i look at renamed brand products connection then i can see immediately schema change c sharp change so very very nice as a best practice in graphql to do that and then have this transparency what is going on and this is nice even if we do a very small change like maybe i just want to remove some field here that I didn't want to have in here and let me do it quickly. So we go to types, we go to product node and then let's just edit it in place. So we remove this one. This doesn't really have a big impact. It just removes this field from your type and then we create here a new branch. Let's call it removed internal ID. Create the pull request. The build starts. Okay, the build is finished and you can see this is from our bot. It checked again the schema in. We can go here to files change and now you can see this is the C sharp change. This is the schema change. Again, you see the 
actual impact to your schema. So pretty nice to use it this way. There's also another way to do that with snapshot testing. You could also do a snapshot of your schema and check that in. However you apply this pattern, it will help you in your day-to-day -day life. So I recommend that to everyone, even if you use the schema registry. Before you go, please help our project by giving us a star on GitHub. A GitHub star is the easiest contribution you can make to an open source project, any open source project. So star the open source projects that you are using. And with this, I'm out.